Hey guys, welcome to Fishing Planet. My name is Lady, and today I'm going to do the vid about once you're level 3 and up, how to fish in Texas. Uh, currently it's evening, it's um, night already, but I had to do some fishing uh, because I wanted to get each of every predator fish so I can show you guys the differences in money because that was the major goal uh, that I did. So I fished the, uh, the entire day. I released a couple of fish that I thought were either too big or too small, but this is uh, my uh, total uh, fish count. I was unfortunate to get a crappy, by the way, a white crappy. I was uh, a bit too late about that one, but here we go. So I've got a radius sunfish. These are all average sizes apart from this one over here, the spotted bass. This one is actually quite big. They go up to a little under 900 grams, but here you can already see that the amount in money is quite significantly. But okay, let's uh, have a look at the fishes first. So I've got a radius sunfish, a bluegill, a young channel catfish, a spotted bass on red worms, and one on um, a casting spoon, a grass pickerel, a smallmouth buffalo, and then the two shiners. And uh, here we see the uh, experience versus money. So this one is 300 grams, a little over it, and it gives you 7 experience and 36 money. There's the bluegill, that uh, one is 220. It's it's a common one, it's not a trophy though. But that one gives 4 experience and 15 bucks. Now if we check the other panfish right here, we've got a golden shiner that gives you 5 experience and 22 bucks. And here we've got a black tail shiner that gives you free XP and 20 bucks. Now, no, this one is actually the smallest of the litter, so that is why it pays not very good, even though it does play a bit better than the bluegill. As you can see, uh, the bluegill rewards a bit more in XP, but it gives five bucks less than the black tail shiner does. But it's the predators that we are after. Um, here I have a young channel catfish. I caught it with cheese. It gives you 8 experience and 20 bucks. Now compared to the spotted bass that I caught here, this one is actually a bit below average. That one does give you 11 experience and 81 bucks. And here you can see actually quite a big one that gives you 16 experience and 122 bucks. Now comparing that with for instance a pike, uh, here you can see the pike rewards you with more experience compared to the bass, even though the bass weighs more. But money wise, it's definitely the spotted bass that gives you 81 bucks, whereas the pike only gives you 54. And now note that the pike do not reach that huge kind of length um, size. Here, this one is actually cut off. But if we go to the map and quickly go to fish species, let's find the grass. Here you see that it it's known to reach a maximum size of 36.7 centimeters, that is 14 inches, and a weight of uh, 45 gram. So if we go back to our inventory, um, that should be a weight of 450 gram, by the way. Uh, this one is 100 gram less, um, but yeah, not a whole lot of uh, money that it gives you in comparison to bass. Now, if we take a smallmouth buffalo, this is an average size of a smallmouth. <coughs> it's actually um, not that huge. Uh, in general, they go up to 1.8 kilograms. This one gives you 31 experience of 54 bucks. So what that means is if you want to grind XP, go off the smallmouth buffalo uh, first. Because they get 31 bucks. And then secondly, it's the pike that rewards you with the most uh, experience. Even checking with that one. That one does not give you as much as the pickerel does. Money-wise though, it is definitely the spotted bass that you want to go after. Um, this is uh, one of the cheapest that I've caught so far. If not the cheapest one. 
Uh, only 81 bucks. I think the cheapest one I've got was around 78 bucks. Something along those lines. And the biggest one that I've got was actually rewarding 150 bucks. Uh, it was not during this session though uh, on, uh, or on this account. So but that is definitely something that you want to keep in mind when you want to grind money. And like I said, if you want to progress in this game, if you want to level up, if you want to reach uh, the next lake in a very fast manner, um, the experience is, is not that hard. As you can see, I just fished one uh, in-game day and I already reached level 5. However, it's the money that you need um, to get to uh, where we need to be. To reach the next destination, to get the right equipment, uh, to pay for the licenses and stuff like that. Alright, but let's uh, first go home. Uh, we will come back here, but I want to show you guys the gear that we uh, have to purchase. So I got 424 bucks and 295 experience, that is awesome. Uh, this gear that I used, I'll uh, show you guys. So at level 3, what you need is a spinning rod and a spinning reel. These are uh, the best. Let me quickly set this one straight again. Here we go. So at level 3, what you need to do is go to the home store. Do not do not go to the local shop. Go to the home store, so leave the lake. Go to the world map, then click on our shop. Here we've got a very spin 190, and that is the one that you need. I've already uh, purchased it. Then onto reels, you want the mini spin 1200. I know, by the way, that uh, this is a metric system, um, and in Imperial system they are named otherwise. But take the level three mini spin, and then for rods take the level three value spin. Those are the ones that you need. I know that this one says value spin, and then it's uh, six, six inch something. Uh, not entirely sure. Uh, I'm using a metric system, so, but the level 3 value spin and the level 3 mini spin 1200. Then onto the lines, what you need is a mono 0.18mm line. Onto tools and equipment, you want to have the Fisherhood S, that one, the old Demon and the hobby gear. Onto terminal tackle, you want to have a hooks. Uh, 6, 4 and 2. You can already purchase Chubby Bobber, not necessary already at level 3 or le at level 4, but Chubby Bobber is fine as well to have. And then in Lurch you want to purchase the Casting Spoon, 5 gram the silver one and the golden one, 5 gram number 2 Casting Spoons, these two. And as for baits, you want to purchase cheese. Now, I'm currently level 5 already, so I've unlocked uh, a couple of uh, other stuff. Oh, but before I forget, you want to go to licenses, click on Texas, and then purchase an advanced Texas license. Keep in mind that um, these are real life days. So this is uh, 24 hours, so if you purchase it at, say, uh, 10 o'clock in the evening, it will last until the next day, 10 o'clock. And this one goes for 72 hours, and that one is a week, a month, and the unlimited. Now, I am already level 5, like I said, so I want to go to baits. I want to grab pet food as well. And uh, dough balls. And, but you can, can purchase small cup bait. But here in uh, Texas, with pet food and cheese, you can already catch the... Uh, the catfish, the young channel like uh, catfish, and the dough balls, they work pretty good on um, smallmouth bufflers. The smallmouth buffalo, they are subspecies of the carp, and here you can also see target fish, carp. So that one uh, works good. If you are a bit higher level for smallmouth buffalo, what works as well are semolina balls, blood worms work pretty good on those, marshmallows, they work very good. And if you're extreme high level, corn and peas. Of course, peas is the number one carp bait next to corn. But uh, yeah, so if you're very high level, go with uh, peas and corn for the smallmouth buffalo. If you're not that high, marshmallows, like I said, uh, blood worms, semolina balls, and then here it's uh, dough balls. But I actually caught one with rat worms. It did take a while, uh, but you can catch them. So that is uh, is all good. Um, 
So yeah, I did purchase those. Let me quickly check lures. Uh, you can go with uh, jig heads. Do note that um, they need to have a weight that fits with the rod. I'll explain it in a bit, but you guys will uh, see it later on. So these are spoons that are number ones. That is also pretty okay. I'm not going to purchase them yet though. I will purchase these two later on because these are awesome. Even though they uh, cost bait coins, so it's just one bait coin. When you level up, you get a bait coin already. So you just need to up two levels and then you already have enough to purchase these two. Um, but yeah, like I said, that is for later on. Terminal tackle. I will see. Hook one. I definitely like that one. Uh, tools and equipment. I could up for that one. Because this one, this one is 1.5. Single fish weight 4 in total, and this one is 3 kilogram or is, uh, single or 7 kilogram in total. So I will purchase that one. And let me see, uh, that one is well because that allows me to bring more tackle with me. And in lines, I would like to get that one over the one that I had. Okay, so let's go to inventory. Let me quickly drop everything in home because I want to show you guys how to do a proper setup as well let's uh, teach you right from the start how to do that I will do a, do a separate vid by the way about setups um, but this way you already get familiar with it so if we go to home uh, first off let me sell this one because we've got this one right now so we put on all of that just like so then we go here so we have two um, setups that we can take with us so the first one I'll put in the telefloat that is our starting uh, rod with the mini spin 800 now in the second one we place our value spin with the mini spin 1200 just like so then we go to the lines so our first rod that one handles uh, had this line on it from the start now, and now here is the thing what I wanted uh, to talk to you guys about is to how to, to do a proper setup um, so there you've got your free components uh, when you look for instance at the pro indicator for those of you who do not know how to switch it on click on the cockwheel over there click on game then here you've got simple indicator and pro indicator click on that one You'll see three bars, one for your line, one for your rod, and one for your reel. Those are three factors that you have to keep in mind when you want to do a proper setup. Uh, yes, I want to leave settings unchanged. Here, if we check on the details, our telefloat has a line weight between 1 and 1.82 kilograms. So that means that whenever it goes over 1.82 uh, um, kilograms we are going to put too much stress on the rod and the rod can break now if we put a reel onto it and uh, you have to check the max drag and the max drag always has to be lower than the line weight of the rod if we do not do that if we put a, a, a reel on it that has a max drag that is higher than this 1.82 what will happen is when we hook a fish that is either too big for us uh, too strong for us or we end up having a snack what we get then is that we might put too much much tension onto our setup and with our reel being the strongest link then we will break our rod and of course we do not want that to happen because rods are the most expensive in game and that same principle goes for if putting line onto your reel. So here we've got line, a mono 0.80 millimeter that has a test of 1.4 kilograms. Check that with the max drag of your reel. This one says 1.25. If I am to put this one on here, we already get the message. Line is too strong for the reel. There is a risk of damage. What that means is if we end up uh, fighting a fish that is very strong or we get in a snack, um, instead of our line breaking, we will break our reel or even worse, break our rod if this one even exceeds the limit of the line weight of the rod. And of course, we do not want that to happen. So, you want to have the line be the, the weakest link in your setup. So, it's always rod, reel, 
line keep that in mind because that is very important i see so many times that new players in particular end up breaking rods and reels and costing them themselves a lot of money because they basically did not follow um real thump of rod reel line all right so having that said we are to put line on it we take the 0.12 millimeter because it has a test of 0.9 kilogram Whenever you want to put a line on it, you will get this pop-up and you get the opportunity to cut the line. If you make it all the way to the left, if you drag the scissor symbol all the way to the left, it will attach the least amount of line on your reel. If you drag it all the way to the right, it will attach the most amount of line on your reel. Now, if you're not sure how much line fits on your reel, or if you're wondering if 66 is the right number, grab a reel, uh, grab a roll of line that has more centimeters on it, or meters on it rather, and then put it all the way there. Here it says 67, so it's actually 67 uh, meters of line that fits onto the reel. Um, so 66 is uh, still fine, so we'll put that one on it, and we hit the cut button. We'll do the same for this one, but instead we'll be using the 0.18mm line. So we grab that 500, we measure it, 67 it says. Okay, so we'll grab that one, and we'll put that one on it. There you go. And let me sell this one, get some money back. There we are. Okay, back to the rod one, so this is our floating setup. And we want the oval bobber. We're leaving the chubby bobber right here at home. I want hook number one with me. I'm not going to attach to it. I will put hook number two on it. That one goes with it. And we can also bring hook number four. Uh, hook number six and hook number eight is what I'll be leaving at home. Um, these do not make that whole lot of difference. Uh, they're basically used quite a lot for panfish. Hook number four works for panfish too, as do hook number two and one. But one and two also work pretty good in catching smallmouth buffalo and catching um, the trophy crappy and catching trophy bluegill, uh, all that kind of stuff. And they also um, times help you in catching bass or pike on float. So these are the three that I'm taking with me. And then if we go to baits, I'll be taking everything with me. Uh, I will put on dough balls first. And then we'll just simply take the rest with us. I could leave bread at home, by the way, but... Alright. I want to take that one. Hello. To do for four, eight times twenty. Shoot. It should bring the worms with me as well. Oh, there we go. Actually, we almost ran out of worms, so let's grab some more worms. There we go. Back to inventory. There we go. 28. Awesome. Now we need to do the second setup. And for those, we need the casting spoon. So I'll put the silver one on it. And here it says terminal tackle weight is optimal. And that is what I meant earlier in the shop with the lures. Check the weight. Here it says weight 5 gram. If you go here to your rod and check the lure weight. Here it says 5 to 18 grams. So any lure that weighs between 5 and 18 grams fits on this rod. If you put a lure on it that is below the 5 gram given on uh, this rod, what will happen is your cost will be very short. If you exceed the limit of 18 gram in this particular case, what will happen is you will damage your rod. And your cost will be short, but you will also damage it. So you do not want that to happen, so always stay in between those. Mind that if you work with jig heads, let me go here, and here for instance it says 7 gram. Now pretend this is, instead of 7 gram, this is 17 gram. If you would add, for instance, this shed onto it, it would exceed that 18 gram limit. So keep that in mind that if you put a jig head on that is right near to the maximum that your uh, rock can handle, try to find a different jig head with a lesser uh, weight. Because uh, if you add sheds or let's see, those are all sheds as well, but 
worms or grubs that we get. For instance, here we've got grubs. If you add those to the jigger, that actually adds to the weight. Now, it does not say how much grubs weigh or sheds for that matter, uh, but you will get the message that your uh, lure is, uh, is uh, too heavy for your setup. Now, we uh, attach that one to it, but we still need to drag these with us. And there we go. Now we're all set up to go and do some fishing in Texas. So I will show you guys the spots again. Um, this time we'll actually do some uh, some more fishing. So uh, we'll start off with bass, I think. And uh, bass and pike are in the exact same spot. So once you go off the bash, you also get some pike, and once you go off the park, you also catch some uh, some bass. Now I'll also show uh, some spots that we have for radius sunfish, and then also the spots for um, smallmouth buffalo. Um, here you guys see one. It means I've got a friend's request, and in this case it's uh, Fetius. Uh, like I said before, I I will accept uh, requests. Um, but I would hardly ever talk on my YouTube account for the same reason that, for, for the sole reason that I'm mostly using this account uh, to make videos. Um, so, but yeah, uh, I'll uh, I'll accept you later on, uh, Fetches. Uh, if you want to add me, what you can do is try to add my main account or my Twitch account. So this is my main account, the lady. It's uh, premium and it's level 35. And this is my Twitch account, the lady dot Twitch. Uh, it's level 12. It's not premium, by the way. Uh, who the lady tamer is, no idea. I would love to find out. It's uh, it's a different player, but the lady and the lady dot Twitch are uh, my two other accounts that I use. Uh, I use a lot. Uh, befriend me on these, and I will actually have the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, Whenever we, we are in game at the same time, uh, like I said, when I'm on the lady dot YouTube uh, and you spot me, um, you, you're more than welcome to send me a whisper, but it might take some time before I'll reply. All right, but let's get back to do some fishing. A swampy exploration or home sweet home, those both work. We've got a full cloudy day today, so in the morning we can already start doing some fishing. Uh, it's already quite good. However, in late afternoon and evening, uh, fishing gets better, and in around noon, it's not as good as it is. So let's go here. Let's do some fishing. And oh, let's bring that one up. Let's see who's here. Luke and Fred. And Luke is. Standing on the bridge. Well, he's actually fishing in the middle, so that is good. Um, so, rod number one is our float setup. And of course, we want to use the spinning setup. So, you press number two, that will give us our spinning setup. What you do is in my previous movie, I talked about the X, right? So, we've got a clear reeling line there or line of retrieval I should say here you have that triangle of weeds so it goes down on either side and then cross cast so cast towards the opposite shore and there we've got another free line of retrieval without getting too much snacks but we'll start over here just like so and we are to cast about there there we go. Set speed onto free. And we got a snack right away. I uh, just did a video about how to recover from snacks. Uh, that one will be uploaded after this one. But as you can see, with uh, drag set on free with this setup, you already can uh, break free just by moving your rod. So, what are we going to do? Uh, it's called a stop and go technique. Uh, it's uh, the easiest one out of the four uh, techniques that we can do, or one of the easiest. Uh, it's something that I'm using quite a lot because it works on quite a lot of uh, fish. What you do is you hold, uh, you press and hold the left mouse button for one second, 
and you wait until the lure comes from the bottom then you release it and you wait for one second to let the lure get back to the bottom and then you press the left mouse button again so just like this and uh, what we do is we watch our bar there so now we have a snack so you saw that the tension was moving up um, but when you do not have a snack and you actually do see those meters go up it means that there's a fish nibbling on it so then you put in a strike now you see these very small slivers of uh, blue whenever I'm doing this that is just has to do with uh, me reeling in a little bit but when they go up higher we will actually have a fish uh, hooked on also so I'll just let the lure go up not all the way to the middle but just let it go up and then go down again if it stays there for longer than a second it means that there's a fish toying with it as well so you can put in a strike at that moment too let me put a bit like this there we go we have the fish on let's reel this one in and we've got a first spot of bass here i saw it jumping out of the water there there we go our first catch of the day 90 bucks not bad for the first one uh 530 gram uh, so they go up roughly to 900 gram. That is, I believe, the biggest uh, so far. But yeah, 90 bucks and 12 XP. So I'll also show the other side. I'm uh, fishing them the most. And so do a lot of other folks as well. After that, I'll show you guys some different spots. Uh, spots too. Because right now we have fish migrating. That was not the case prior to the 0.7 uh, patch of Fishing Planet that was uh, just released but nowadays it is the case and it means that you cannot farm the same spot over and over again for hours on end simply because just as in real life the fish is moving so I like to give you guys a couple of more spots but I also like to give you guys um, some handhelds in how to deal uh, when that happens to you. I will do a separate movie about fish migration, go more into detail about it. But in short, what you need to do is look for water clues, and that will indicate where you can find the fish. And there we go. You saw the blue on my bars uh, going up. And this one is actually giving a bit of fire. Uh, not really. There we go. And we got our second bears on awesome we'll keep that one so that one is quite a bit small a bit like uh, the uh, uh, little under uh, 400 or a little over 450 gram that I caught earlier with uh, red worms and this one gives us 84 bucks so we'll keep that one too now we can fish on this exact same spot for pike by the way there's pike there as well and they're in general general more closer towards the um, bank up there and if you hook them you hook them between here and roughly there and same goes for that spot you'll hook them uh, more closer towards the shore and then on to here if you start hooking a fish roughly there nine times out of ten it is bass and that's because pike sort of like to hang more closer towards the shore than bass bass also likes to move a bit more out in the open um we are currently using casting spoons um i do know that medium spoons work a bit better for catching park i've been pretty consistent in catching bass up here and sometimes i'm also consistent in using pot in fishing uh pike for instance if you would fish here between seven and nine you would also get quite a lot of pike um but it is not always the case sometimes they, they'll just sort of disappear the pike but let's give it a try let's see if we uh, can actually hook one I uh, cast us onto the land there I need to cast a bit closer let's try this let's hope that we can hook a pike now and like I said uh, and show you at the beginning of this uh, movie 
go. Dang. Lost it there. Um, the pike does not pay as good as the bears does. So yeah, that is uh, a bit of a disappointment. Perhaps to uh, some of you who really enjoy pike fishing. I'm uh, one of those folks. I prefer pike over bass. But yeah, sometimes that happens. Now, all right, now I got a snack there. But if I am to hook a fish now, I'm past that zone. So more likely be a, a spotted bass than uh, than a pike. But luckily, we've got more spots. So let's reel this baby in. Here we go, because I do not want to uh, have this fit last too long. One of the other spots to fish for pike and bass, both of them. Did you guys see the V's up there? If you did not, uh, scroll a bit back, about two seconds. Then you see some lovely V's, and that means predator fish. And I'm more inclined to say that that is pike than that it is smallmouth. So we got a bag of weeds over here in lily pads in there as well. So what you can do is you can just cast out like so. Oh, actually, let me stand a bit further out. Just cast out like so. And then you start to reel back in. Uh, again with stop and go and we'll quite neatly intercept those V's that we saw earlier. Also we got the line of weeds up there and then we've got the structure of uh, the bridge up here and if we look a bit to our left there we've got another line of weeds and there we have some more V's in the water. So you just do like this. Now of course you can always stand a bit Towards the shore, we got a snack up there. That happens when you're fishing uh, next to lily pads. Now, if you want to know how to get rid of snacks, um, my next fit is about dealing with snacks. So I'll look that one up. I will upload it um, when I upload this video as well. So it should be right there in the playlist of uh, Fishing Planet 2017. If you cannot find it, I also have one uh, video about snacks in uh, Fishing Planet 2016 Absolute. Uh, those videos, by the way, um, I will remove them once I've redone the vid in the list of 2017. Um, but until I've uh, done that, you can still watch them because they'll still hold some truth. Alright, I did not catch anything there, no worries. What you can also do is just stand here because you've got some lilies over there and lilies over there and what you can do is just cast right out in between those and then reel in. So I'll just do it like this. So like I said earlier, bass uh, is uh, a fish that loves structures and so does pike. So in general you'll find them a lot near lily pads or patches of weeds, you'll find them near uh, dead logs in the water, you'll find them near cars in the water, all the kind of stuff. Because uh, especially pike are predatory fish that like to charge uh, from out uh, or from under uh, and uh, they like to ambush their uh, prey. And for spotted bass it's the same, they too like to hang out around lily pads where they can uh, stalk onto the prey and then ambush them. Alright, so I did not catch anything here, no worries. Alright, but like I said, there are more spots. So we got lily pads up here, that is a good spot. Especially when you want to fish in between them, or alongside them. And moving on, we've got a nice open water up here. That too, by the way, is a great spot because here, this is actually the deepest part of the lake. And Bess likes to hang out in the deep shallows as well. So that is another great place for them. So here, 
you got a lot of predator reaction, especially on cloudy days during the evenings. So those peak hours that I earlier showed you guys. So this is another great spot for both bass and pike. And if we move on a bit. It goes for here as well. And this is actually one of the places that I prefer to fish for smallmouth buffalo. So smallmouth buffalo, they are cop species, and at our current level, um, uh, as you guys could see at the start of the movie, I had one call on rat worms. But if you're level four, dough balls, they work better. Um, so I've got dough balls on that one. Try to use a hook number four, a hook number two, or hook number one. I would preferably go with hook number two or hook number one go after this uh, these fish one odd works um, but with one you do get more uh, more catches do not use it too odd um, that one does not work that simply is uh, is too big so standing um, there that is a great spot to go after small mouth uh, buffalo another spot is standing here and then casting there behind those lilies so what we need to look for with these is that you do not let me grab Correct rock for that one. What you want to do is you do not want to cast too close towards the lily pads, but also not too far away. So a bit like here, and then set leader depth. What I did was setting leader depth at 165. Now you will notice if you cast over there that your bobber will flat, will go flat. Uh, that is because here the water is only 145 meters, uh, uh, 1 meter 45 centimeters deep. Uh, over here it's 165 and if you can cast a bit further than 20 meters it goes to max depth. But this here is a good spot. Just like so. Let's hope that we can hook one already. So this is 18 meters out. Uh, I actually caught the one on red worms at 15 meters out and I was actually standing there a bit more and then casting a bit like that to reach that spot. But from here it works as well. Now if you do want to go and stand on that spot, you can actually walk when your rod is casted out just by doing this. Using a WASD. That does help you a bit. Let's put it on 15. Give one go because I do not want this bit to uh, last too long. I'll angle it a bit this way so you guys can see we've got a fish jumping up there. And that indicates a penfish that's being chased by a predator fish. You also see from time to time a couple of V's moving here. So this is also a great area to fish if, uh, for instance, uh, there the uh, wooden bridge is uh, too full with folks. This is actually a good spot. I think I'm not in the right time zone for carp. Carp in general like to start getting active when the water is a bit warmer. Uh, so that's usually in the afternoon. And today it's a full cloudy day. So I'm not entirely sure if uh, if I will catch one uh, right now. They are bottom feeders, so you do want to be uh, fishing uh, as close to the bottom as you can. You can uh, on occasion catch them also at say 90 centimeters or 30 inches, but bottom is uh, is a bit better. The same goes, by the way, for channel uh, catfish. You can fish them here. You can also fish them at the the dock and then casting out here or at the uh, wooden bridge and then casting out there. Uh, put cheese on or pet food and set your uh, bobber to uh, as close to the bottom and there you go and you can fish for catfish all day long. Now the carp in general they like to nibble first, they like to take their time, play a bit with their food before they start to do a, a strike or, or a bite, proper bite. And I am getting nothing at the moment. Um, for the vid's sake, I will skip 
that one and we'll move along over the damn road uh, like I mentioned earlier I will do a bit about each species um, that you can go after and then also with the their preferred bait and, and stuff like that but this is just to help you guys in trying to find the fish or at least give you a few pointers um, like I said fish are currently migrating so here we've got another great spot for predatory fish uh, in between the lily pads and alongside it this is a great spot for catching pike and catching bass and then here's some panfish like bluegill radius sunfish and whatnot and if you cast that a bit there and here is where you find small of uh, buffalo so let's try it here give this one a try and you can see that here uh, the water is more shallow than on the other side so let's reel in just a little bit let's see what is it at 11 no still not good so I need to change depth a bit let's set to 145 casting out again and there we go not perfect yet so 140 would be better I think as you can see it's still a bit crooked instead of uh, vertical oh we've got already something there let's see if it will bite quickly or not Seems to be taking its time, and when I lift my rod up, there was some tension on uh, on my bar. So there's definitely fish uh, fish interested in it. There we go, fish on small one though, because smallmouth buffalo with this uh, starting setup would have definitely taken it. But here we go, a green sunfish. Uh, I will release it because it's not worth the money. Um, right now I want to grind some money back, so I prefer to uh, get some more spotted bass on. But yeah, 13 bucks and 15 XP will release you. Okay. And then, oop, here we go. So another uh, spot for smallmouth buffalo is if you stand up here. Now with this particular setup, the... Um, Tele float 450 you will not be able to make the distance what you need to be is you need to be there behind the lily pads and this one only allows me to cast inside the lily pads but so you want to be able to cast over there now a tele float 650 with a mini spin 1200 reel and 0.80 millimeter line on it will actually make that distance so yeah there you go and we notice some fish splashing there Okay, moving on. Come on. Yes. Here we've got some more lily pads. Another great place to uh, go after fish. And then we will be back at the lake. Or at the uh, bridge. So there are two other spots that I mentioned in the uh, introduction about the uh, lakes. Which is the one up there and the one up there, right in between the lilies that you've got. There's quite a lot of penfish, but you can also do very short casts and hook a, either a bass on it or a pipe. So that is uh, pretty good. So, all in all, recap. If you want to go after money, go after spotted bass. Uh, you can fish them with, uh, with the lures that I just showed you guys. So the X up here. And then of course all the lily pads that you can fish alongside. Now if you want to lure fish or uh, float fish them, you can just set a leader to say roughly 80 centimeters or 90 centimeters. So that's 30 inches. Uh, put ra um, rat worms on it. Uh, hook number two, hook number four, those are all fine. I've got another V going there. Just cast about there and that will help you uh, 
catching those uh, bass. Now, with red worms, though, you will also get a lot of panfish. So do keep that one in mind. Another one for smallmouth buffalo is over here. Uh, roughly 80 to 20 meters out. These guys are uh, fishing, I think, at those uh, as well. Uh, we've got level 19 over here. Who's aiming in the middle of the lake. Um, here, uh, a bit about, about here, this spot. Set your leader at 1.45 centimeters or 140 centimeters. Again, uh, these dough balls work. Uh, if you're high level marshmallows, peas, corn, all the kind of uh, blood worms, some molina balls, those work too for uh, small life buffalo. Do not fish too close towards lily pads, but also do not fish in the entire open lake. Be a bit like right here. So that kind of distance in between. Uh, if you want to fish at catfish, just go stand. Where is that? So we got in the center of it. You can just uh, cast uh, straight in front of you. Um, also, again, a bit closer towards the bottom, uh, just like the carp. And put either pet food on it or a small cup bait. Cheese works too. And that's pretty much it. So, but most importantly, I know that money is, is quite important in game, but most importantly, guys, just go fish after the fish that you want to go after. Especially here in Texas, you do not have to pay any kind of money in terms of traveling. If you want to uh, go after best, you do need to have the advanced, uh, advanced license that you can purchase. Um, and right now, they change the money a bit so I'm not entirely sure what level is the appropriate uh, to go to uh, Mudwater River and start making money there. I'll do some testing on it and I'll get back to you guys but um, having that said um, I still believe that at level let me check oh I need to leave the lake for that Okay, so at level 8, you have the opportunity to purchase a, a stringer that can hold up to 15 kilograms of fish. And that one is actually quite good to, uh, to get and that will actually help you make a lot of money uh, once you're level 8. And that will help you in particular make a lot of money in New York, going off the walleye. Uh, but also in the uh, Mud River, going off the largemouth bass. That one uh, helps as well. But we'll get to all of that later on. For now this was how to grind some money in um, Texas and also showing you guys a bit uh, of where to find certain fish species, what to use for them. Uh, I wish you the best of luck in leveling up, uh, particular to our new players. Good luck going from level 3 to say level 7, level 8. I will continue uh, my uh, videos. I'll do a bunch about Retrievals I will do about uh, well the techniques of course I will do about money I will do about water clues and all that kind of stuff later on um, If you like this vid give me a, a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel if you want to watch me fish live play the game fishing planet live every Week on Monday Tuesday Wednesday and or Thursday I will be playing Fishing Planet. You can find me on twitch.tv slash ladyofgames and the O in off is zero, not the actual O, not the letter. Okay, so with that said guys, I'm wishing you tight lines and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.